here in the i button and in description box below you will get complete playlist of solution of system of linear simultaneous equations welcome to video number four and in this particular video we are going to discuss a very important topic that is gauss jacobi's method okay so to solve system of linear simultaneous equation we have two methods that is direct method and indirect method what is direct method that is you will get the exact values of x y and z that is you will get the exact values of the variables but in case of indirect method we have to perform certain iterations by which you will get the approximate values of variables that is x y and z in direct method we have to study that is gauss elimination method gauss jordan method crouch method which is also known as lu decomposition method in indirect methods we have to study that is gauss jacobi's method gauss seidel method and relaxation method okay in video number one we have studied about gauss elimination method in video number two we have discussed about gauss jordan method and in video number three we have discussed about this method in detail with working rule and problem in this particular video we are going to discuss about gauss jacobi's method in detail with working rule and a very important problem okay so let us start gauss jacobi iteration method this is also known as gauss jacobi method or we can say jacobi's iteration method okay this method is applicable to the system of equations in which leading diagonal elements of coefficient matrix are dominant that is large in magnitude in their respective rows okay we will discuss this after a while okay now we will discuss about the working rule consider the system of equation that is a11x plus a12y plus a13z equals to b1 a to one x plus a to two y plus a to three z equals to b two. A three one x plus a three two y plus a three three z equals to b three. Okay. Now we will discuss about this point. Diagonal dominance property must be satisfied if you want to apply this Gauss Jacobi's method. Okay. In this equation, if you see the magnitude of a one one must be greater than the sum of magnitudes of a one two and a one three. Okay. In the same way, the magnitude of a to two must be greater than the sum of magnitudes of a to one and a to three. Okay. Again, the magnitude of a three three must be greater than the sum of magnitudes of a three one and a three two. Okay. That is this three. Okay. This has to be satisfied if you want to apply Gauss Jacobi's method. Okay. So, suppose this property is satisfied then from this we can take x that is x equals to 1 upon a11 into b1 minus a12 y minus a13 z again we can take y from this that is y equals to 1 upon a22 into b2 minus a21 x minus a23 z from this equation we can take z that is 1 upon a33 into b3 minus a31 x minus a32 y now after writing this equation we have to perform certain iterations okay suppose the initial values for iteration is not given to you in that case we will consider x not equal to 0 y not equal to 0 and z not equal to 0 okay and we will try to find the first approximation values of x1 y1 and z1 okay if you want to find first iteration values of x y and z simply put subscript as one here here and here that is x1 y1 and z1 okay and in this we have to put subscript as zero so that this will become y0 z0 x0 z0 x0 and y0 okay here we can find the value of x1 y1 and z1 okay so again substituting these values of x y and z the next approximation is obtained the above iteration process is continued until two successive approximations are equal okay yes suppose at fifth and sixth iteration the values of x y and z are matching so we can say those values of x y and z are my solutions okay now with the help of a problem we will discuss this method in detail the question says solve the following system of equations by gauss jacobi method okay here you can see the diagonal dominance property is satisfying that is here if you see the magnitude of this is 6 and sum of magnitude of this and this is 3 we have to come to second row that is 
the magnitude of 5 is greater than is 1 plus 1 that is 2. Again, magnitude of this is greater than the sum of magnitudes of is 2 plus 1 that is 3. Okay. So, we can say diagonal dominance property is satisfying. Okay. Suppose this equation is written in third and this uh, third equation is written in the second. In that case, we have to interchange. Okay. That is, we have to rearrange this equation so that we get the diagonal dominance property. Okay. So, rewriting these equations, we can write x equals to 1 upon 6 into 4 minus 2y plus z. Again, y will be 1 upon 5, 3 minus x minus z. Again, z will be 1 upon 4, 27 minus 2x minus y. Okay. And suppose this is my equation 1. In the problem, initial approximation values are not given. In that case, we have to consider x not equal to 0, y not equal to 0 and z not equals to 0. Okay. So, we want to perform first iteration. So, we are finding x1, y1 and z1. Okay. And here we need to write subscript as 0, 0. Okay. So, x1 will be 0 0.6667, y1 will be 0 0.6 and z1 will be 6.75. Now, coming to the second iteration, that is, here we will put x equals to x1, y equals to y1 and z equals to z1 in equation 1, that is, in this equation. Okay. So, we are finding x2, y2 and z2 and the subscript used here is 1. Okay. So, on calculating we will get x2 equals to 1.5917, y2 equals to minus of 0 0.8833, z2 equals to 6.2666. Okay. Now, coming to third iteration. Here we need to put x equals to x2, y equals to y2 and z equals to z2 in equation 1 because we are performing third iteration and the and we are finding x3, y3 and z3. So, the subscript used here is 2. Okay. So, on calculating we will get x3 equals to 2.0055, y3 equals to minus of 0 0.9717, z3 equals to 6.1750. Okay. Now, coming to fourth iteration that is we need to put x equals to x3, y equals to y3 and z equals to z3 in equation 1. And here we are performing fourth iteration that means we are finding x4, y4 and z4. Okay. So, subscript used here is 3. So, on calculating this we will get x4 equals to 2.0197, y4 equals to minus 1.0361, z4 equals to 5.9902. Now, we will come to the fifth iteration. Here we will put x equals to x4, y equals to y4, z equals to z4 in equation 1. You will get x5 equals to 2.0104 y5 equals to minus 1.0020 z5 equals to 5.9992 in the same way if you perform 6 iteration that is we are putting x equals to x5 y equals to y5 and z equals to z5 in equation 1 you will get x6 equals to 2.0005 y6 equals to minus of 1.0019 and z6 equals to 5.99 5, 3. Again, coming to iteration 7, here we will put x equals to x6, y equals to y, z equals to z6 in equation 1. And we are performing 7 iteration, that means we are finding x7, y7 and z7. Okay. So, x7 will be 1.9998, y7 will be minus of 0 0.9992 and z7 will be 6.0002. Now, if you see in iteration 6 and iteration 7, Suppose we want to find the values of x, y and z up to 2 decimal place. Okay. So, if you want to round off this value, you will get this value as 2.00. This value will be minus 1.00 and this value will be 6.00. Okay. Again, coming to 7th iteration, x7 will be how much? That is 2.00. This will be minus 1.00. 0, 0 and this will be 6.00 0, 0. okay if you see the value of x6 and x7 is same okay in the same way value of y6 and y7 is also same again the values of z6 and z7 is also same okay that is we are finding up to two decimal place let's suppose you want to find up to three decimal place in that case i think we need to perform one or two more iterations okay yes so Finally, we can write since the 6th and 7th iteration values are same 
that is up to two decimal place. Hence, we can write that is the approximate solution is x equals to 2, y equals to minus 1 and z equals to 6 and that is my final answer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.